You're listening to the best local sports show. Boots, Bats and Balls on Six Towns Radio. Hello, I'm Ross Hancock and welcome to Six Towns Radio, where today on Boots, Bats and Balls I'm going to start with a sentence that you're not going to hear very often, because today I'm going to be speaking with a male model. Now, my guests for Potter about didn't start out as a model, instead playing professional football most of his life, including spells at Arsenal, Stoke, Reading, Brentford, Oldshot and Wickham, amongst others. Unfortunately, age 30, he's forced to retire from football, but has since gone on to launch his own fashion blog, whilst also modelling. So please give a big welcome to John Halls. Hi, mate. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Now, I'm going to have to start with a big question, because... Modelling and football, fashion, football, yeah. it's, it's not the usual link. So how did it come about? I'm assuming you've always had an interest in fashion? I've always liked the fashion, yeah, I've always been interested in that. I was still playing football at the time. I uh, I got approached by uh, uh, quite a big agency in London when I was still playing football. And obviously I couldn't. they said I couldn't play football. Uh, so, you know, I just said, you know, I'm still a footballer, I can't really do it. Uh, so I just took a card and that was it. And then about... Eight months later, I had a bad injury on my Achilles, which after a year of operations and trying to get it back uh, back fit and, and injections and whatnot, I had to uh, call it a day. So I uh, just uh, forgot about it, really. And then I stumbled across the card, gave the lady a phone call, and that was it, really. I accepted it done and uh, sort of took off, really. So, uh, you know, I've been kind of lucky that I fell into it because, you know, leaving football is such a hard thing. And it's... I kept my mind busy enough, for it, even though I, you know, I miss it every day. Uh, I've been quite fortunate. So how did you get notice then? Did someone literally just come up to you and say, here's my card, give me a call? Uh, well, the, all, all, the, yeah, all the agencies uh, across the world really have scouts, and you know, they go out scouting to shopping malls and, and you know, that sort of thing. So I, was, I think I was in Westfields, and a lady approached me really, and then just took her card. That was it. <laughs> So, would you say it's easier being a model than it is a footballer, or is it quite a difficult industry? It is quite a difficult industry. I mean, you don't really know where your next your next pay packet's coming from, really. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to be to be working quite often, but still, you know, you only know your shoots, you know, a couple of weeks or if you're lucky, three or four weeks in advance. But I mean, I've had some really easy jobs, uh, some lovely jobs traveling the world, and I've had some really hard jobs. I mean, I'm doing quite an hard job right now, which is, uh, I say hard, but, uh, you know, people probably <laughs> listening and saying, you know, that's not really hard. Uh, so it's just kind of, you know, putting, you know, I've done about 100 outfits today, really, on and off, on and off, on and off. It gets kind of quite tedious, really. But, so, you know, and then you get other jobs where, you know, you might have to travel sort of to somewhere really glamorous even though it is quite a, kind of lonely. Uh, uh, and you get to do a nice shoot, really, in somewhere warm, and, and that's it. So it's a bit of a mix. You've got to be lucky and, you know, hope the the bigger the bigger sort of fashion guys come calling, really. But, you know, and so far, I'm, uh, I'm very fortunate to be doing it and uh, count myself lucky. See, see, what I was going to say is, I'm not an expert of modelling and fashion, but in your day-to-day routine, what's, so you say you get up to shoots and stuff, is that sort of what you do all day, just trying on clothes in front of the camera all day? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously if you're working for a brand, it would just be, uh, you know, if it's, you've still got, you got e-com, which is uh, on your online stuff, so that's quite yeah. tedious, where you just, you're obviously trying on all their, all their sort of collection and, and taking pictures of it, whereas you can get some editorial jobs and or campaigns where they're trying to advertise their, their their clothing and that's a bit more glamorous where they you know obviously you see your billboards and whatnot where someone's on a beach looking looking kind of great uh well that's a good side of it and uh and the editorials are in your your magazines and, and your papers and that's quite that's quite exciting as well because it's normally quite glamorous as well but uh yeah so it's a bit of a mixture really so is the idea that one day we'll go into a shop and be able to buy a john hall's piece of clothing is that the idea I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of, there's two separate things to it. See, it's, I've sort of got my, my own sort of fashion blog that I'm trying to link into the, into the modeling world whilst I'm doing all these shoots. And it's, uh, it's a bit hard because obviously time consuming, but, you know, I've, I've, hopefully one day in the future, yeah, I've always loved my fashion. So one day in the, in the future, I'd love to have my own clothing line, really. But, uh, uh, that's a long way from now, I think, at the moment. That's right, we'll go on to your football career, because you started at Arsenal, just down the road from, mm-hmm. where, you, from where you were born, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct, yeah, yeah. And you found yourself at Highbury with some of 
probably the best players to ever be in the Premier League. I mean, Thierry Henry, Dennis yeah, Bergkamp, Patrick Vieira, Ashley Cole, carry on. Yep. But um, what was it like? <laughs> to be a play- what was it like to be a player among such world class footballers? What are your best memories of your time at Arsenal? Oh, I had a great. I mean, even coming up for the, we had a great, great youth team. We won the the FA Youth Cup two years in the balance, really. So that's probably you know my best memories there. I think at the time, as such a youngster, you know, you always believe in yourself and kind of, you know, just sort of making that uh, sort of jump up into the first team and training them every day. It was kind of the, the thing you wanted to do and expected to do, really. So you kind of took it to, for granted. And it's not until you come away from it and you think, wow, you know, I was training with these players. And, you know, but at the time, you're trying to compete with them. You know, they're your teammates and you're, you're thinking, well, you know, I want to play in front of this guy and I want to play in front of that guy. So... As much as it was, you know, fantastic being there with them and, and you learned so much, so much from them, it was kind of sort of your everyday life, really. So, yeah, like I said, you kind of come away from it and then you think, wow, you know, I was lucky to be with them sort of players and learn from them. It's a, uh, yeah, privilege, really, looking back at it. And at Arsenal, like you've already mentioned, the youth team, um, some incredible players there as well because a lot of those players have since gone on to be real successes. I mean, Steve Sidwell, yeah, uh, yeah. James Harper, James Yeah, a lot yeah. of boys have come. I mean, I, I would have expected a lot more to go on, but uh, I've always kind of said it's kind of hard to leave Arsenal, and, and uh, I think a lot of boys have left Arsenal and sort of found it, you know, sort of different or harder at other clubs. You know, not everyone's taught the Arsenal way, and sometimes you come out of it, and especially, you know, if you go down a league or, you know, to a small, smaller club, you know, the way they play football and the way they it's expected is exactly probably the opposite of what, you know, Arsenal was at the time when I left, really. And uh, sometimes it is difficult. So, you know, even we had some fantastic players who should have went on and, you know, made it big in the game. And unfortunately, that didn't really happen. But uh, like you said, some of the boys that come out and done really well, you know, they've done fantastic things. We said, well, Joe Bushwood and Arps, you know, they've done brilliant, really. And one of the players that I think of as soon as I think of Arsenal youngsters is a player that's at Stoke at the moment Jermaine Pennant uh, what were your thoughts on yeah. Jermaine when he was at Arsenal yeah Jermaine uh, he's, he's had that great you know ability in terms of his career you know and uh, it, I, like I said he, he's coming out of Arsenal again you know maybe he's found it a little bit difficult at first but and he's had his troubles and whatnot. but uh, you know of course he's, he's found his feet and he's found his way and uh and he's keeping his nose nice clean and he's doing with so uh, I'm pleased with him. And you left Arsenal, like you say, it might have been difficult to leave, but you did leave and you joined Stoke on a permanent deal in 2003. Yeah. What, what, would you, what was it like at Stoke for you? Was it totally different surroundings then? For me, it was, it was totally different in the sense that, you know, I was playing first team football and that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted it because, you know, I thought so much of myself at the time. I just thought, you know, I should be playing wherever I was and it wasn't happening at Arsenal at the time and I come to Stoke, felt really welcome, you know, just got really well with the fans and, and the players and I just wanted to continue playing really. I didn't really want to go back to reserve team football and, and after a couple of talks with uh, with the boss at Arsenal, I sort of come to a conclusion that it might be better for me to stay at Stoke so that's what I did and uh, I had a great time at Stoke, yeah, so I was kind of, uh, you know, happy that I did do that. Yeah, and at Stoke, there was a lot of man-of-the-match performances, I seem to remember, um, a, a fan's favourite at times. But at other times, it seemed like you were out of the team for no reason. Uh, did you feel like you were given a fair chance at Stoke? Yeah, I did. I mean, when I was, when I was at Stoke, you know, under Tony Pulis, I had a fantastic time. I think I played, you know, every time I was fit under Pulis, I had a couple of injuries. I mean, when things sort of turned around and... Uh, with the new boss and the new uh, the board and whatnot, I think uh, the reason I didn't play is because they wanted me to sign a new contract. Which it was obviously it was a few a few reasons why I wasn't signing my contract, and that was the main reason really. So uh, we sort of got into a you know a bit of a, a bit of a ding dong and what have you, and I didn't sign my contract. So that was it. You 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 don't sign your contract, you don't play. So you know that was one of those things, and then. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I've made my exit, and um, you know, looking back, I feel okay. But uh, that's life, isn't it? You get on with it. So I'm assuming you're going to say that you prefer Tony Pulis to Johan Boskamp. Oh no, I, listen, I loved Johan. You know, uh, uh, he was a massive, massive character. Uh, every day, going to training, there was something new under that guy. He was uh, 
a great character. Uh, it's just one of them things, you know. Uh, obviously, I, I, I love Tony Cruz as well. You know, he sort of brought me into football and gave me my chance. And I wish he would have stayed there because I think uh, it'd have been a lot, a, a lot, a lot better for me. Really, think things would have worked out better. But yeah, yeah, you know, that's uh, one of them things, and, and you move on. And you've talked about it already that you miss football. What is it most that you miss about it? Just uh, you know, it's obviously the camaraderie with the boys you have every day. Uh, get, get ready for just looking forward to, to, to match day as well, and that you know that buzz and thrill you get of you know playing in front of people, and especially when winning games and playing well. So yeah, so it's a big thing I miss. Yeah, definitely. Have you got any regrets as a player? Is there anything that you wish, looking back, that you'd done differently? I mean, yeah, I mean, I've. You can always look back and regret loads of things, can't you? But uh, I, I think joining Reading maybe for me wasn't uh, wasn't a, a great decision. Obviously, I had a lot of injuries as well. As soon as I left Stoke, I seemed to pick up injuries everywhere I went. So I can't really blame anyone or anything really for my for how my career turned out. But maybe would have stayed at Stoke uh, if I could would have made my decisions again really. But but looking forward, um, what do you hope the rest of your career will have in store for you? Do you have any other big plans in the pipeline? I'm just gonna see how it comes. Really, I want to obviously push forward in 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 the modelling and uh, hopefully the jobs keep coming and maybe some bigger jobs and and hopefully try and uh, wing my way into some sort of clothing business. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, fingers crossed. And finally, this weekend, it's two of your former clubs up against each other. Arsenal, Stoke at the Emirates. I'd like yeah. a prediction, if I could. What's the score going to be? A prediction? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's an exciting game. Uh, at the moment, I'm really, you know, uh, Arsenal are playing some terrific stuff at the moment. You know, the way Arsenal are playing at the moment, is uh, yeah. it's hard to look past them. I'd have to probably say, it, I think it'd be quite tight. I think Stoke have got a good chance, but... I'm going to stick with the Gunners for 2-1. I thought you'd say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks, thanks for taking the time to talk to us, John. Um, All my mates are Gunners, sure. mate. <laughs> <laughs> Get murdered if you heard that. <laughs> um, best of luck with the modelling, John. Uh, hope we see yeah, some of John Hall's clothes in stores sometime soon. <laughs> Ross, top now, mate. Thanks a lot.